We've spoken before about how to determine whether a first order differential equation of the form m dx plus n dy equals zero is exact, where m here is a function of x and y, and n is likewise another function of x and y. The method that we used to determine the exactness of this equation was a simple criterion that we used to check. The criterion is the relationship that the partial of m with respect to y must be equal to the partial of n with respect to x. That is, the derivative of m with respect to y, the partial derivative of m with respect to y, must equal the partial derivative of n with respect to x. And if this relationship is an identity, as a result, it implies that there exists a function f of x and y such that df dx is equal to m and df dy is equal to n. However, suppose that dm dy was not equal to dn dx. That is, this differential equation is not exact. How are we then to determine an integrating factor to multiply this differential equation by in order to make it exact? We're going to begin with a general first order differential equation of the form that we mentioned before. And we're going to assume inexactness of this differential equation. We begin by proposing an integrating factor i of z, where z is equal to x times y. It is this integrating factor that we're going to multiply this differential equation by in order to make it exact. So we go ahead and we multiply i of z by our differential equation, and this gives us m times i dx plus n times i dy is equal to zero. Now, as you can see that m times i is another function of x and y, as is n times i. So we let m star equal m times i and n star equal n times i, so that this relationship becomes an identity for this differential equation. And if this relationship is an identity for this differential equation, that implies that this new differential equation that we get is in fact exact. So what we're going to do is go ahead and solve for i of z using this relationship. The first part of our relationship involves solving the partial derivative of m star with respect to y. This partial derivative is d dy of m times i. Of course, we will have to use the product rule to get that the partial derivative of m star is equal to the partial derivative of m with respect to y multiplied by i plus m multiplied by the partial derivative of i with respect to y. Now remember that i is equal to i of z where z is equal to x times y. So if we are to take the partial derivative of i with respect to y we would have to apply the chain rule. So di dy is equal to di dz times dz dy. And of course, since z is equal to x times y, then dz dy is equal to x. So we find that the partial derivative of m star with respect to y is equal to the partial of m with respect to y times i plus m times i prime times x. i prime is simply di dz. So i prime is uh, the derivative of i with respect to z. And we have x here which is dz dy. So this is our relationship, our equation for dm star dy. And of course we do the same thing for n star where we take the partial derivative of n star with respect to x. And for which we have n sub x times i plus m times di dz dz dx, okay? So in this case, we're taking the derivatives with respect to x. Again, i is a function of z, where z equals x times y. So our derivative with respect to x of i is going to be di dz times dz dx, and dz dx is simply y. So we find that dn star dx is equal to n sub x times i plus n times i prime times y. Keeping in mind that i prime is the derivative of i with respect to z. 
In order for our new differential equation involving the integrating factor to be exact, these two partial derivatives must be equal. So m sub y times i plus m i prime times x must be equal to n sub x times i plus n times i prime times y. If we rearrange this equation, we will find that i prime divided by i is equal to the partial of m with respect to y minus the partial of n with respect to x divided by n times y minus m times x. We'll call this function p of z. We can then write i prime minus p of z i is equal to zero. And we notice that this is a first order linear differential equation in i. Using the separation of variables method, we find that the integral of di over i is equal to the integral of p of z dz, from which we find ln of i equals the integral of p of z dz. Solving for i, we have i of z is equal to e to the integral of p of z dz, and keep in mind that p of z here is equal to this function here. So this is the integrating factor that we have to multiply our original uh, differential equation by in order to make it exact. And you'll find that sometimes this i of z function can be rather complicated. However, in certain situations, we have a simple enough function to use in order to get an answer.